Hello, this is an assessment of a Lutner Style 8 Grand Piano that's uh, about uh, 6 foot 3 inches long and it's made in 1887 which is a good age for Blutner. might sound old to you but in fact both Blutner and Beckstein of this age make, made superb pianos and didn't really improve at all on that and um, we're just going looking at uh, first of all the key tops are in very good condition some have been taken off stuck back, some have come off and been stuck back on but uh, well done so not too noticeable there and looking at the cosmetic side of it uh, it's uh, obviously the original finish which is a uh, French polish uh, now French polish flak you can see the crazing here um, typically goes crazed and you can repolish it French polish black but it's uh, very very time consuming it actually takes probably about half as long again as ordinary French polishing because the the black it's really hard hard to hide any deficiencies with black whereas if it's rosewood for instance you can disguise obviously any lines there are but you'll see lines in this even if it's repolished you can see them reflected here quite clearly the top of the piano I, I won't look at it all because it's all very similar but um, just crazed like that so it would be nice to do that well black polyester is what we we prefer just because it comes out perfect really uh, a lot of clients don't want that they want the original which is understandable but it's just so difficult to do so a bit of a conundrum there and uh, so polyestering is the, the thing that we would always do to our own pianos if we fully restore them on the black and then if we do other color then we we do french polishing now the question here is uh, whether to just recondition the piano change the hammers will need changing as we'll see in a minute or whether to fully restore the piano which is obviously a lot more work and changes the piano so much tuning pins original um, you can tell that by the looseness of the small of the medium star here and lever and so and um, they're re they're apparently slightly loose but i found that resetting the pins um seems to do the trick on bluton as always so just show you what that means first of all using the pin setter holding it like that and then hitting the top here with the tuning lever i've only got two hands so i can't show you but imagine you hit there the tuning lever not to knock the pin right in but just to roughen the wood up and that on blutners seems to set the pins very adequately um, obviously if they don't set then you're going to have to replace them and if you're thinking of replacing pins you're thinking of replacing strings so that's where you start down the line of full restoration the problem with fully restoring a Bluton is usually the, um, the tone, the treble strings, you can change those without any problem, as we'll see hammers need doing. But the bass strings have a special quality to them. Now, if you try to just change the pins on a Bluton without changing the string, you might find that the strings break. There's one that has been replaced here. Um, and the replacement's quite a good one, but the, uh, there's two problems involved there. One is that the original Bluetooth strings are second to none, and even the replacement, I don't know if you'll be able to hear on the video, but the difference in tone. Let's play this one. Is, and that one, that's a duller sound, more of a, it has a ring to it, a bite to it. Of course, the hammer changing will help as well. And that one doesn't have the same bite. interesting harmonics coming out and, and that's the case with all of them if you're a tuner um, perhaps you'd like to comment on that there's so that's that's the last of the singles obviously before the by chords so well, that is quite an acceptable tone it's probably the best you're going to get well the hammer will make it better once that's changed because the hammer's too soft um, so that'll make a difference going up they're just so well designed really and at the moment that doesn't sound like a very good break point but there usually are a very good break point it's just the hammers again they're too soft we'll have a look at them now and before we do that the soundboard it has got a slight crack on it and obviously you that's cosmetic and you will uh, repair that if we uh, if we restring the piano or rather shim it but um, it's not making any difference to the tone the the, the 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 bridges on the down bearing on Bluton is, is hardly ever deficient even at that age of piano they just have a very clear singing tone and the sounds traveling across the soundboard no problem at all 
that's testimony to the how well they're made and the tone of the glute there well, those who are used to it is second to none of this older blue now, particularly. It's got a patent action. There's the blue patent action. We've shown that many times before. Just a quick look at it and uh, other videos comparing it with the normal one. The front rail of these older blue is held on by this, this cleat holds them on and they push downwards instead of upwards. So the front rail here pushes downwards. It's quite tightly pushed in, so I can't show you me pushing it down, but it goes down rather than up. A quick look at the felts under the key show there's no moth. We didn't see any moth in the piano at all, so that's encouraging. Now if we look at the hammers, you can see how much wear there is. This is where it's mostly played, and more than, I think more than 10 millimeters across the top there. So right, right across, the, here, the centre of the piano, we can see uh, too much hammer hitting the string, so the harmonics are not sounding clear. And the hammers themselves are extremely soft, so uh, they definitely need replacing. Now, on a Blutner, we said on, on other pianos, it's usually hammers, shanks and rollers, uh, but there's no roller on a Blutner patent action. So changing the hammers is very often all you need to do, because these hinges are usually kept tight. The system that Bruton have used I means there's not as much, not so much wear at all. You could theoretically change all of this on the hinge, but it's quite expensive. What we, these are what we call abstracts on Bluton. It's a very, very different style of action, and it can be changed, but normally you'll find that hammers are changed. You'll often find that one of the shanks breaks, so you'll see we change hammers, one or two new uh, ones of these as well. So the question here we've got then, do we fully restore the piano? Or do we just try setting the pins? Um, perhaps as I think the pins setting the pins, they'll be tight for a very good long length of time unless they're drying out in the environment. Um, or is the piano going to be fully restored? The question is asked because it totally transforms the piano, makes it a different sounding instrument. I'm zeroing in on a crack in the frame at the very top there. I don't think that's anything to worry about. If we fully restored it, obviously that would be repaired. Um, the frame looks slightly mottled as well. So if you re-polyestered the whole piano, you might feel the frame needs doing. And once you're going to do that, then obviously that's down the road of full restoration. So if you have a boot in the ground and you're thinking about full restoration, you'll see others on uh, videos of ones that we fully restored. But the piano's transformed. The bass strings are very hard to match the original. String makers will tell you that it's very, very difficult to get. They're very high tensile. I didn't mention this, that nearly the maximum tension they can be. So that's a major problem. So um, that being the case, if you work on a work on a Blutner, especially if you're going to pitch raise it, very often one of them breaks, just like this one has in the past. Um, so that's another issue. So a lot to think through there. But wonderful pianos, Blutner pianos of uh, 1887, this one roughly is. Um, and uh, in good condition, apart from the cosmetics, really, and the hammers and uh, the slightly loose tuning pins. Obviously, if we replace, fully restore, we replace the rest plank under here. So that's an assessment of a, a Blutner style 8 grand piano, um, about six foot three inches long. Now, there are quite a lot of these around, and we're trying to think through the decision to make whether it's fully restored or or whether just recondition. The hammers are definitely needing changing, there's no doubt about that. Um, and then, actually I forgot to mention the back checks as well, but those two items, but then everything's starting to wear. The keys, there's not a huge amount of wear in those. The testimony to Bluton is so, construction is so good really. So um, they do go on and on. And the regulation on this one, normally the regulation is badly out on Bluteners, and this one, um, perhaps tuners have been keeping it regulated, but the hammers are very, very soft and, and it will transform the sound. Of course, we'll have to re-rate the keys if we do that. But fully restored, um, if you're going to do the piano black, you probably would think, well, uh, sorry, polyester, that you, you need to match it with a good interior, so down the road of full restoration might be the road to go down. But it does change the piano. It's still a very extremely good piano, obviously, but it's just different. It's a delicious tone there, even with the soft hammers.
rich space. You don't really want to lose it. And down, very, very weak here. So that's definitely needing needing doing. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, this is a Bluthner style eight grand piano made in 1887, six foot three inches long. And we've just finished fully restoring the piano. Just want to try and highlight some of the main things. There's not nearly enough time to go through all the technical aspects that we've addressed, but um, hopefully can zero in on some of the more important ones. The key tops were already in good condition. They've been buffed up and uh, already original ivory as you can see slight lines there but that was shown on the other video i'm going to try and keep this as short as possible um, but this has been polyestered it was originally um it was black and uh, quite crazed really all over the piano so just briefly have a look at this i've added caster cups because um well, just for me and uh, these are glass caster cups raised the piano by about an inch because the pedals were already low it means that um uh, you you can have the, those under it's, it's still playable because sometimes pedals are very high. It's very hard to get them under. We've mentioned this on many other pianos uh, before. Um, Beckstein pedals are usually very low. Blutners aren't always that low, but these were. Um, so that's encouraging. I need the leg room myself. If you look, my legs just fit underneath nicely now and they really weren't fitting under properly without the caster cup. So that's important for me. Now this uh, part of the refinished uh, uh, after reconditioning video, I'm going to try and keep re reasonably short, but I forgot to mention on the previous one that it doesn't have the original legs and lyre, but the client, um, these are well made actually, and the client wanted to keep these rather than return to the turned ones, which it would have originally had. This is the Beckstein that's in stock, it's actually been fully reconditioned as well, and this has the original legs and lyre, so you can see how the oct there's octagonal turned legs and the lyre to match. These Beckstein pedals are also very low, so uh, that means you can add caster cups here as well if you want to. But these replacement ones on the Bluton are particularly well done, so I think it's a good decision to keep them. Now just to keep this one short, I'm going to keep it as a separate video, but we'll also combine it with the original um, assessment video and put jump marks on so you can jump from one to the other uh, links underneath the video as I, I'm doing these days. Um, but we did talk about whether the tuning pins uh, were tight and uh, they were a bit on the loose side, some of them. And uh, the client did decide to fully restore this, have this piano fully restored. So as you can see, it's all it looks brand new now. Um, if you look at the pre previous video, then you'll see what it was like before. Um, so everything's been done to the piano. Interestingly, the bass strings here, which um, I, the, on, on the other one had original Blutner bass strings, with Brutner coning. Now this is more modern coning and much less gap here. I'm not quite sure why the Brutner ones were so far away from the agraf because the general um, idea is to get them as close as possible but enough obviously you need some space so they can be pulled up and won't actually reach the agraf but that's that's what we would normally do putting new strings on. We'll listen to them in a second. Because if you're fully restoring and not just reconditioning then it's incongruous if you do the outside of the piano and don't do the inside because the inside obviously doesn't look good compared to the outside so this has been fully redone now so this, it, it looks like a brand new piano and listening to the tone of this piano I'm going to try and copy or mirror the before restoration video so the assessment video um, of the notes I play so it'll be possible if you've got the before and after video to use the, the links underneath to jump from one to the other and see what the difference in tone is. Um, so I'm going to start off here with this string here, which was played on the other one. So I'll put a link underneath, you go out to play this one, and then the, the before one as well. And I contrasted it with that one because that was a replacement string on the, uh, that had been replaced before on the, before on the assessment video. I think it's a combination of new strings, but new hammers are, are making more difference than the new strings. Now that was played on the, before the, the assessment video, so if you jump from one to the other, 
If you're just listening to the, the after video, then I'll put a link at the bottom of that one to show you how to get to the other video. On the other video, we talked about strings breaking, and because original blueners are very close to their breaking point, these are slailed slightly differently, and they're very, very unlikely to break. New strings don't normally break, and obviously you're very careful with bass strings and tuning them. Now going up, this is the first of the bichords. Um, I'll have a look at centering the hammers as well as making sure they're centered properly. But it's changing the hammers is making more difference, I can assure you, than changing the strings. I think these strings have got more, a little bit more rounder tone to them. And the break point sounds better to me. So it's definitely the hammers making the main difference. We had a look at the soundboard on the assessment video and just to look at this, the fact that it's been shimmed, but it's been bleached to match the shims. Um, there's a certain, some tuners don't like, some technicians don't like the idea of bleaching soundboards. If you've got any opinion on that, please let us know. We haven't really noticed any difference in tone doing that. Um, I mentioned the bridges are really good and the down is really good on Blutoners, so there's no, there's, there's no sort of lack of tone in the middle area before and of course it's still as good uh, it's better after in the sense it's got new string so still got the patent action which we really do appreciate the the touch of patent actions but they don't repeat quite as well as um, a modern action is one only thing to be said about it and uh, of course new felts and this has all been cleaned up too here's a 1929 smaller Blutner style 4 and uh, has a normal style of action you look at the difference here this is a standard style of action that you get on most grand pianos so back to the Blutner you see this l-shaped spring which is totally unique to Blutner's this is as far as I know and uh, made so many of them up to about 1924 or 5 when they change to doing what everyone else does. But these are so smooth and uh, we've got other videos about that so I won't go on too long about that. So all the hammers have been replaced and felts as you can see. Um, and these are brand new German hammers. You can see there's no indentation, no marks on the top. So I will be making marks so I can make sure the hammers are voiced uh, accurately to the unaccorded pedal as well. If you do a jump on the bottom of the before and after video, you'll see how incredibly worn the previous hammers were. It's very common to find Blutner grounds have been played and played and played into the ground. Still sounding nice but far too mellow and uh, the action doesn't feel right and so on. So changing the hammers is really the most essential job to do on Blutner grounds. So as shown before we're going to mark the hammers with uh, carbon paper. I've got to show you the worksheet that we do for pianos both in stock pianos and clients pianos when we're finishing them off and uh, just to say that we're I noted the touch weights a bit on the heavy side so that's going to be reduced uh, to that kind of range so that'll be a fair amount of couple of days work I should think to get all this done and voicing and fine regulation so look at some voicing you see I've marked some of them already playing them and feeling that they're a bit bright that mark underneath the B for bright just indicates that it's just one degree too bright so that one there was two degrees too bright um, I haven't got long enough to sort of show that in all details because I don't want to go on too long um, and the pitch of the piano is now A443 we leave it high because it tends to drop the new string so we want to leave it slightly high it'll drop down a good touch and full tone uh, our tuner is extremely pressed with this piano which is which is good news sorry that was written in error that should be down here um, and then forcing a fine regulation by the way it's 85 keys not 88 so having marked all the hammers we can see um, where they're perhaps slightly too far over to the left to the right and also I can voice the unaccorda that's voicing in between where the hammer where the where it's hitting the strings so when you press the shift pedal you get a slightly different tone of course that tends to settle in as the piano is played as well so it needs voicing again after a few years ideally but we can see mainly they're quite well centered so that's encouraging but sometimes you get some anomalies I noticed at the top here uh, we've got marks here and that was I wondered if it was touching the frame because sometimes you you do find um, on some pianos that the hammers just clip the frame 
and it's often not detected so we'll get a piano to restore many years later and we're still touching the frame uh, but that wasn't actually touching frame it's just the carbon paper paper marking it so by and large these are pretty good we'll just to move one or two over slightly the other thing we can pick up from this is it's hitting all three strings evenly because sometimes the hammers are put on but they're actually only hitting say like they're hitting the left hand one first and then the other two afterwards and that does make quite a thin sound and uh, you even get strange noises coming out of it then. So that's an after restoration video of a Blutner style 8 grand piano, 6 foot 3 inches long and made in 1887 uh, which is a very good year for Blutner and in fact they don't really change that much up until about 1920, 1924 um, almost the same Blutner uh, patent action and wonderful pianos are so consistently made got some fine regulation and, uh, and also uh, some fine touch um, weighting that's uh, got to be reduced on the whole. But that's quite common for us to have to do when new hammers are put on. So I've got to re-weight the keys, put weights in the front of the keys mainly. But first of all, just check all the points that are well, uh, uh, really freed off, uh, lubricate maybe the centre and uh, make sure that we've done it, got the action as free as it should be and then think about weighting. But um, in my mind, and our tuners as well, and in fact everyone who works here, there's no better tone than a blue and a grand of this age. And as it's finely regulated, and we'll try and regulate it even more finely, it'll have tremendous control. So whatever, wherever you play the piano, um, it's going to sing. So let's try the tenor first of all. So tenor and treble. Let's try and compare that with some other pianos. I think what I'm going to do is put an appendix after this video and just to play the different pianos and see if you can detect a difference in tone. I'll put some jump points from jumping one to the other as well. So thank you very much for listening. So here's the Bechstein A that we looked at earlier. Bechstein A, six foot one or so, uh, 1909, I believe. This is a Yamaha C3 made in 2003, six foot one inches long. And back to the Bluthner. Mm -hmm. 